Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing well tonight. It is Thursday, July 23rd, and I'm Ashley Fields with Yard R Us. I am actually out of town with my family uh, today, so I am recording this beforehand so that you guys still have uh, your video at your normal time that's on your schedule. It is just pre-recorded, so forgive me for that. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and make sure you put them in the comment section and I will come back and answer those since I won't be able to answer them live. So tonight we're gonna be doing um, polka dot stockings, plain glittered stockings, as well as our glitter cursive believe. So we're gonna hop on in and get started. First thing we got is our two whimsical stockings. These uh, are, are listed as polka dot stockings online, but obviously you see that they don't have polka dots on them because we freehand the polka dots. So each one I already primed, obviously. I primed two coats of red on my red and just added the white to the top. And then my green, I did two coats of green and added my white to the top. So uh, these are dry. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually get my shading on here. So I'm gonna do my shading green on my green and then my shading red on my red stocking. So I'm gonna use the number 12 shader that I'm always using and just follow along that perimeter. We do this first because we're gonna want it to dry. Uh, I actually like the look of the polka dots over top of the shading. Um, so that's why you see me doing this first. So once this dries, then I'm actually gonna outline it and then do the polka dots at the end. So typically I do it the opposite way, but this time it'll be done um, a little bit differently. So there's that shading on uh, the green. So let me move this one and do our, we're do our red one. Now, on these, um, you don't have to shade if you don't want to. I feel like it adds a little bit of a dimension to your piece, but that's all a personal preference. So if you don't like the shading, feel free to not do it. Alrighty, this one is your number 23 shading red. Same thing, my number 12 um, shader. And I'm just gonna load up that corner and follow along the perimeter lines and the CNC etch lines up here on the top. Actually gonna have to wait on these to dry um, before we can outline them. So give me one sec. All right, guys. So next, now that the shading is dry on these, I'm actually going to go ahead and outline them with my script liner. So let me go ahead and grab that. This is your regular script liner number four. Uh, the same ones that we have in the store. So I am going to get my black. Excuse me. It's a little separated, so let me get it mixed back together. All right, now, the top part, the white part, we're leaving completely blank as white. That way you could always add names to them. So we don't do any shading or outlining or anything on the top. We just simply leave it white. By the time you get your shading and you're outlining on the bottom of your stock, uh, your stocking, the and then you get your polka dots on there. The top of it, you're gonna want that kind of plain because the bottom's gonna have so much going on. So at this point, I'm just getting a little bit of outline on that perimeter. And then once that outline dries, then I can do my polka dots. So let me move this one and we will uh, outline the black, uh, the green. The thing I like about this pattern is you don't have to be perfect with it because there's, you're gonna end up putting polka dots on here. So, you know, if you have a part that you outlined and maybe it got a little too thick or it's real jaggedy, no worries. You're gonna cover, be able to cover that up with some polka dots. So I don't want you to worry too much about this kind of beginning part 
because we still have a lot of stuff to get on here. Now, while this dries, I'm gonna move them aside and we're gonna get started on uh, some glitter stockings. I know that uh, my mom, Mary, has done, she did a couple of these or one of these in one of her glittering tutorials, but they were already also on my list for tonight, so I figured we'll just do it again. So anybody who didn't catch it before, you can catch it right now. Now, everybody has a different way of painting. Everybody has a different style, right? Um, I always put a coat of white at the top because whenever I'm going to uh, put my glitter on, if I only had one coat of white, like for instance, when I did this white, if I put my glitter on right over top, I want you to look up close. You can still see through that wood uh, or see through that paint, excuse me. And that's why we always do two coats of everything so that you can't see through it. So this is good right here on the lighting. You can really see those strokes that I made. And so if I didn't put this coat underneath the, the white glitter coat, then you would still be able to see through it and the, the end result's not gonna look the way that you want it to. So that's why you see me. I did a coat of white with just a, a brush and I freehanded my um, little swirl. So now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use glitter red. Actually, before I do that, anytime you're glittering, you're gonna wanna make sure that you clean your space. Um, you're not gonna want anything on your table, gut, dirt, ugh, dirt or dust. Uh, that will end up coming out in your glitter that falls on the table that you're gonna try to recycle. So I always try to clean that up a little bit. So now I'm starting, I just have a, a small roller. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna take this one off because I didn't realize I already had um, a small roller ready. So this is a small, I think it's a four inch roller uh, from Home Depot. So let me get this put on here. Now this is your glitter red number 20, 22. So let me shake it first. Cause y'all know how that goes. You don't shake it and it's separated and then it ends up uh, squirting out all over the place. So let me go ahead and get some on here. I'm gonna start with the red as far as my glittering goes uh, because it's a lot easier to do red first and then come back and do white because the white can take some of that red glitter in. You don't wanna do that. So do your red glitter first and allow that to dry and then come in with your white once the red is completely dry. So this is kind of a good thing that this video is pre-recorded uh, because to do this process on your stockings, really there's some wait time in between. And so uh, for the sake of recording this, that it'll be okay because I can start and stop the video during that wait time. So at this point, all I'm doing is taking this roller and backing up that red glitter paint or glitter red paint, excuse me, up into those lines I've already created for myself. Now, y'all, this is uh, super fancy, right? Watch this. I take my finger and I kind of wipe off any of that excess or if it's a jaggedy line and I make it smooth with my finger. So while it's wet, that is when you're gonna add, whoop, you're gonna add your glitter. So this is just plain red glitter. You're gonna wanna fully cover your piece or your paint, excuse me. You wanna fully cover all of that so that you make sure that it's all over all of that paint. So give it a good little shake. And ta-da, whoopsie, got a little bit of red paint up here. Let me wipe that before I try to show y'all. So there you go, there's your glitter at the bottom. Now I'm gonna do it one more time. And move that out of the way. I don't know, and those of you who've started messing with glitter, y'all know once you touch it, it sticks everywhere and it's gonna be on you all day long. So here's just another look, same exact thing. This, this stocking is just opposite facing. These are completely reversible. The reason I don't have lines on here for you is uh, so that you can flip it to either side and do it either way. Um, had I etched the lines in there, it, it makes it so where you're really more stuck uh, with what you can do with the piece. 
So we, we left it without lines. That's actually how I do them every year. And I do hundreds of them. So I think you guys can do it too. It's not um, a hard thing to be able to achieve with this. So now taking my finger, cause I'm real fancy <laughs> and cleaning off that excess. So while it's wet, gotta glitter it while it's wet. That's what's going to be the thing that's going to hold that glitter on. If my paint was dry, obviously the glitter wouldn't stick to it. So you got to get it nice and good while it's wet. Another thing to make sure that you're doing, if you're using a brush while doing this, you don't want any clumps. You need, you need it to be a flat, smooth, even coat of paint. And that's what's going to give you the best results when it comes to glittering. So now for both of these stockings, we're gonna have to wait until they dry completely before I can put the white glitter on. So these do still have more work to go. I'm gonna just go ahead and move them out of the way right quick. And let me sweep up my area just a little bit. And I have the cursive bleed sign ready to go too. So let me grab this one. Now, ooh, let me see if I can turn turn the camera around. Well, I actually, actually no, I think y'all can see it. There we go. Believe. I think I only have to worry about that when I'm doing my life. Um, all right, I did go ahead and get a coat of glitter red on here. That is not something you have to do prior to. You could paint it and go ahead and glitter it at the same time. The only reason I did that is because there's a lot of edges on this piece. So for me, it was easier to go ahead and get one coat so I could get all of my edges done. And then now when I'm coming back, all I have to worry about is a coat on top and glitter and that's it. Um, so that for me, it, like I said, it worked better for me. It, don't feel like you have to have two coats of the glitter red because you don't. You could totally make it work with just one coat. You just gotta be careful that as you're working across your piece, you don't want it drying because then you're not gonna get your glitter to stick. So uh, somebody who might be a slower painter, you might wanna do it just like I just did, uh, get you a coat on here before. Uh, you're ready to glitter it and then add your glitter uh, with a second coat of paint. It's a personal preference thing. I just want to set you guys up for success and let y'all know what I think might be easier for you. So at this point, all I'm doing is making sure that I have every little space covered on the top. You want to make sure that your paint is nice and consistent and you don't want um, to not have enough. If you don't have enough paint, your glitter will not stick. It'll stick in certain spots. So consistency is very key here. You want it to look like if anybody else paints with the roller, you want it to look like it's got a good even coat on it. So that's, that's no different from doing this piece. It's the same exact thing. So I just add a little bit more and I can tell my roller's running low and I keep it going. So let's see, we're almost done. Glittering can be quite quick. Um, so as you see now, I'm coming back and I'm just lightly going over top the whole thing, making sure I didn't miss any spots. I need the whole thing to be wet because we all know glitter doesn't stick if there's nothing wet. For it to stick to. I'm gonna move this out of the way, okay? So here is that piece. Let me just show you how, the wetness on it. Y'all can see it's a nice, smooth coverage. There's no thick spots. You obviously, I'm not using a brush, so there's no brush strokes in it. And this is gonna be the same exact thing as the stockings, fully covered in glitter. Now, um, I usually typically use, I know we guys, uh, or you guys have these, right? Uh, the glitter jars. But typically I use a sifter, like a sifter that you would use, you know, in your kitchen. They have some really big sister, sifters at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And um, they are about this wide. And so I use a big bucket and I use that sifter and it really helps me to glitter really quickly. 
So if you're somebody who's doing a lot, I, I encourage you to stop at Dollar Tree, get you a dollar bucket and a dollar sifter, and it will make your life so much easier when it comes to glittering. As y'all can hear, my dogs are outside. Um, I always have them put up when I do a live because they're very disturbing, and I guess I should have put them up even on a recording. <laughs> they're crazy. So. Now, all of this excess glitter coming off on the table, I will sweep it up and put it back in my jar. Um, I always do try to save as much glitter as I possibly can and when I can. Now, another way to make sure that every little spot has glitter is shake it a little bit as you're trying to get that excess off. Now, let me turn it around. I gotta finish glittering this part. Give it a good shake, shake and shimmy. And there is your glittered Believe. Um, this one in particular does not have stakes on it. Uh, we have them with and without stakes. So we could always do that uh, either way if you'd like. But I planned on putting this inside of my house uh, and doing it without stakes and using it as part of a, a centerpiece. So uh, this one is done. All I need to do is poly it. And what I do when I poly these is I actually spray poly onto them. I don't roll it. So all that one needs is some poly and it's good to go. Now, um, our stockings. We still have to finish our stockings, but I'm actually gonna have to clean this table up. Anytime that you're doing glitter between colors, you have to have your table completely clean. If I don't clean off every little speck of red, then when I start with my clear, I'm gonna get red inside of my clear and we don't wanna do that. So y'all give me a couple of minutes, let me get us cleaned up and we'll get on to the next part. All right, y'all, everything is dry. So now we can finish out our stocking. So here we are with our red stocking. So since our red is our base, we are going to do green and white polka dots. On our green stocking, since we have green as our base, we're gonna do red and white polka dots. So um, I happen to just have a paint lid uh, I was gonna throw away, but I'm actually just gonna use it as a, pa a palette for myself. So I'm gonna get a little bit of Christmas green and I'm gonna be using our, um, our foam pouncers. These, these are Martha Stewart brand from Amazon. We've shared the link in the group several times. So if you wanna find them, you can always search in the group for foam pouncers or Martha Stewart. They're Martha Stewart foam pouncers from Amazon for like six bucks. And you get six, or yeah, six different sizes. So um, I like to kind of have at least two different sizes of each color. It's all personal preference really. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab, this one is the one and a half inch. So I'm gonna just grab this and kind of go to town with it. Just a little bit of that green. Kind of takes a little bit to get your, your pouncer full. Now on this, I just honestly, it's, it's all a very random kind of thing, okay? Now I have that one and a half inch. So now let me switch over and hmm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. This is a one inch. So like I said, I just personally like having different um, sizes kind of mixed in here and there. Get a little bit more paint. Now, it's hard for me to know that I'm done, which is why you haven't seen me put these pouncers in the water yet. Uh, I want to go ahead and get some white on here and then that will help me to know when I'm really gonna be done. I have to really be able to look at it. So this next one I grabbed for the white, this one happens to be a one and a quarter inch. Uh, it's all to me about variation of sizes. I just don't want them all consistent. I really like seeing different sizes kind of mixed in. And I also like seeing some of them, you know, coming off of your board too, or off of your piece, excuse me. 
Okay, so now I'm needing to go back, get a little bit of green. Now I'm being, I'm able to see where I, I feel like I might be missing a little bit. So I feel like, mm, okay, one here would work really good. You know what, that one's kind of see-through. Let me fix that. Let me fix this one. Now I might even go ahead and grab my little half inch. This says it's a half inch, but honestly it looks more like a quarter inch to me. And I'm just gonna do a couple that are really, really tiny. Now this is one of those things, honestly, you could just keep going till the sun comes up the next day. Uh, there's, you know, you could just never have enough polka dots. I personally like polka dots. I know some of you um, aren't as big of a fan, but for me, I just love them. Okay, let's see. Let me see. Yeah, you know what? I think that looks good. I'm going to leave it. So for this particular one, I'm actually finished. The only thing I'm left to do is do a coat of poly and a coat of clear glitter uh, when this dries. It has to be dry first. Uh, we do it like that for us because we sell these at our store, obviously. And so it makes it a lot easier that we already have it polyed and glittered and all that. And then we use squirt bottles to write names on the top. So there's your look at your red polka dot stocking. That is finished. Now let's finish our green. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to grabbing my plate. Since my green sponges, there's no way I can reuse these on red. Let me go ahead and get these cleaned out right quick. Um, I know I'm done with those. I'm gonna keep the white out because I'm still gonna use the white. So let me just clean my sponges a little bit. And my, I got a bucket of water over here. There we go. Okay. Now, same thing I just got done doing uh, um, with the green and the white. Now I'm just doing with red and white. So I'm gonna switch to my Christmas red. Get a little bit on my my little paint lid here. And I think, I, you know what? I think I'm gonna stick with the same sizes again. I think I'm gonna do the one inch and the one and a half. So I'm gonna get it loaded up. I'm already about to, I'm already running out of paint, y'all. Just, there we go. That's a little better. All right. Now, let me, I think actually I'm going to get a little bit of white on here. And then that can kind of help me to know where I might need to put, you know, my smaller bits, my smaller uh, dots on here. All right, I think as far as the big, I'm good. Now I'm, I'm switching over and do some of the little ones. I always like each color. I like to have two different sponge sizes. Um, for me, it's just kind of like the mix and match of everything and it's not all consistent. And I think that's what I really like about it is that inconsistency of just having multiple uh, sizes and colors. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm doing that on purpose. boom simple as that here's my green stocking that's completely finished so here's a look at the green that lighting's kind of off all right so there's your green and there is your red so they are interchangeable with one another because you're using all of the same colors on them so how cute are these there's your end result 
Um, if you're wanting to add names to these, don't feel like you have to glitter before adding names. You're always welcome to go ahead and add them onto here. Um, the way that I described it, the, what we do is um, already, we put the poly on there and do the clear glitter on there. Um, that's really because of us selling it to customers uh, live in bulk from our storefront. So that's not something that you guys are necessarily having to worry about. So y'all don't have to, you know, poly it prior to. That's just how we do it because of the storefront. So there are your polka dot stockings. And then now we just need to finish up our red uh, solid glitter stockings. So I'm trying to get my stuff cleared off. All right, now these are completely dry. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I always take these and tap them. Tap it on the ground because I want any excess glitter that's not secure to my piece. I want it to come off before I start using that clear glitter. And that's because I don't want to pull this red glitter into my clear mixture. So kind of, I always kind of tap them on the ground a few times and then take my hand and wipe off any excess. And that way I know I'm good to go. So when you're doing white, we're going to do the same thing as the red. We're going to use a, um, a roller. This is again, the small roller. I believe it's a four inch roller. Now, the only difference here is I'm actually going to do the outline first on my sock because that's what's going to help me. Oh, that's not the right white. That is what's going to help me to be able to um, do my line around the perimeter of my red stocking, but it also lends me to be able to get that excess on top. Let me grab the squirt bottle that I actually need for this because all of my bottles have the tips cut off of them so the paint will come out quickly. So I need to grab one of my bottles that doesn't have a tip cut off of it so that I can get a nice fine line on the perimeter of my sock. Give me just one second. All right, y'all, you can see that tip's not cut. So it's gonna give me a nice, really small, thin line. I'm trying to pull out this excess dry paint in here. I think it'll be all right. All right, now, whenever I'm doing outlining on uh, glittered pieces, I want my flow of paint to be consistent so that the thickness of my line is consistent. So I always start up here in the white. You can see it, I'm already dripping paint right here. That's okay, I'm doing this on purpose so that I can recycle this paint. So I kind of get my flow started up here in the white section. And in fact, I'm already noticing my squirt bottle is gonna be giving me some issues. So I actually need to take my lid off and clean out, clean out my spout and get out all the dried out gunk that's in here because it is not going to work for me the way I need it to work without me cleaning that spout. So give me just one second. Okay, let's see. There we go, I got it, okay. Now, let's see if we can get a better line. I kinda like seeing you, or show, being able to show y'all guys how things don't always work the way we expect them to because then that shows y'all that you're normal whenever things are going on. All right, so I'm gonna start up here in the white and I'm gonna allow that flow to start here at the top so I can carry that same consistent flow throughout. So start at the top and then I'm hovering over, um, over top that glitter. I'm not actually touching it. I'm just hovering over top of it. All right, now that perimeter line, I need that to be shaded so that I can go ahead, or I'm sorry, I need that to be glittered. So that's why I went ahead and did that first. If I did that last, uh, then all that excess paint for me actually bringing that up to the top would come over top of the work I just did. So that's always why I do it first. So you know what? This is actually kind of dried out. Let me, I need to throw this, this one away and open a new one. That one's old and it's kind of dry. So now I'm gonna have to load this one. So give me one second, let me get this loaded. Um, all I'm doing right now is filling in the same white that I've already put in here as my base. All I'm doing is coming over top of it. 
I've already kind of established the lines that I'm needing. So now I'm just kind of butting up with my roller up to the, the red so that I can now get my clear glitter put on here. It's actually a clear mixture with clear and silver. So I'm just using my, uh, my roller and I'm letting that roller do all the work for me. Now, now that it's completely wet, now I can go ahead and glitter. So I'm going to use the clear mixture and I'm going to make sure that, that lip of white that I put on here has a good coverage. And then once that lip has coverage, then I'm just glittering the top. Now, uh, Mary already had a video over glittering presents. I believe is uh, part one and two over glittering presents. She also shows you how to put a name on these. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can always go back and check that out. Me, personally, I have really bad handwriting, so y'all don't want to see my names because they're not great. All right, shake it. And ta-da! This is wet, <laughs> so I'm trying to be careful. There is your finished look. Completely glittered from top to bottom. And we did the red first and then came back and did the white. The reason for that is because your red glitter is darker than your clear glitter. So you're obviously going to want to do your red first. All right, same thing. I'm going to start at the top and begin the outline of my stocking with a little squirt bottle. And then I kind of come up here and give myself a little excess. Now, one thing I didn't mention, I know I just did it, but I did not mention. I actually take my uh, roller and I get a second coat of white on the top edges. Let me show you why. Y'all see those edges? They are not, um, they're still transparent, okay? You can still kind of see through that white paint. It doesn't have a thick coverage on that. So I'm kind of just giving it another second layer of paint to try to thicken up that coverage that I'm having. It's all for aesthetics and just the look of it. There's no other reason for that, honestly. I just think it looks better. Um, and that's why I do it like that. So same thing, all I'm doing, I'm coming in with the white and I'm backing up to the lines where my red is. Once it's all wet with paint, then I can go ahead and glitter. almost done now when I'm I, I did clean my table before this so afterwards I've been sweeping my glitter off and recycling it and putting it right back inside of my bottle as long as your table and your surface your working surface is clean you can always recycle your glitter if it's not clean then your glitter is gonna get dirty you're gonna end up having to throw it away so there is your finished stocking left facing right facing and then we have our polka dots as well thank y'all so much for joining me tonight i am so sorry i wasn't able to be here live but i'm glad that i was still able to bring you guys a, a tutorial so that you know how to paint your stockings in your curse of belief um, if there's any questions, like I said earlier, please drop them in the comments and I w I'm happy to come in and answer anything and give clarification for anything. Uh, thank y'all so much for being here. I will see y'all again soon. And until then, y'all keep on painting. Bye guys.